All right, I want to know. You do this for a while. And that's scary stories to tell in the dark. Um, saw this when it first came out. Didn't start reviewing it until didn't start reviewing movies till after this came out. So, trying to get my phone and everything. <clears throat> so, yeah, finally get to review this thing. Now, a little bit of a backstory. Um, I vague when when this is coming out and everything. I thought, don't don't you just love that slip? Just love that slip. Uh, you know, based on the stories, I remember vaguely reading some stories from the books. I would check them out from the library at school, and I remember the big toe and the red spot. And it wasn't till I watched from you know from the trailers and stuff. I remembered the big toe and the red spot. That one. It wasn't until I watched the movie that I remembered Harold. I'm like, I remember the Scarecrow one now, Harold, yeah. But, yeah, it's basically, um, and when this came out, you know, they had the Super Bowl spots, which I don't watch last year, Super Bowl, but they had the spots. And, um, going into this, you would believe it's a... It, it would be a um, an anthology film, which would make sense. Even though the stories are short, like really, really, really short. Like, really short stories. So it would be kind of hard to do that. What they've done is they built a world around the stories. They built a story about Sarah Bellos. who used to tell scary stories to children. And they wrote it, and they based the movie around where did I forget Ramon, Augie Chuck and how did I, how did I forget her name she's the main character too that uh, what's her name I can't remember her name Zoe Coletti plays her, but... And they find this book, Cerebellum's book of stories, and then the stories start to write themselves. And one by one, people are taken. People are involved with what... No, not in the house. See, what happens is, this movie takes place in 1968. On Halloween, a group of three friends decide to get back at this bully named Tommy. They, uh, they, uh, they trick him with a, uh, you know, Halloween bag full of bad stuff, and then they throw eggs and stuff at the car, and then they chuck flaming dog poop into the car. I mean, also to them, though, Chuck's sister, the three friends are the girl, Chuck, and Augie. And Chuck's sister is in there, too. Eventually, this all ends up at the Bellows house because they go to this drive-in and hide in Ramon's car. Now, Ramon is an interesting character because he's he's a draft dodger. But, in, I, you know, 1968, I wasn't even born yet. Hell, my mom wasn't even born yet. So, I don't, I'm not sure how it is back then. Nowadays, there's not really an emphasis on the draft. I mean, I know there is still one, but it's not as prominent as it was, was back then. But, they just make it seem like because he doesn't, no, he's he's scared to serve. He, he's scared. He doesn't want to die. I wouldn't either. But they, you know, 
There's a cop that completely, just completely hates on him because of it. Now, I'm not sure how things were back then, so I can't really judge. I'm just trying to voice my opinion here, but to be fair, I mean, he doesn't want to go. You shouldn't have to go. I didn't want to go. But that's not why I didn't go. I have a disability. You know? I, haven't, I don't think I've ever said this on camera, but I have autism. And I, that, you know, while on one hand, I don't get to serve my country, on the other hand, I was relieved because I don't want to die, you know? That's my biggest fear is dying, you know? But I still, I still respect anyone who serves our country. Oh, yes, very much. Just because I can't, doesn't, and I'm scared, doesn't mean that I don't appreciate those who do. So, to all you who serve, thank you. But, um, <clears throat> so back to the story. Um, he's, you know, he's a draft dodger. Uh, they're in the car. Hit Ramon's car, and then they go to the Bellows house. And this is where the book comes in. They find the book, and the main character, she takes the book, and then the story starts to write themselves. There's Harold, which is the story of the scarecrow here, and the Tommy the bully is taken by that. And, you know, other ones happen. There's, there's the... I'm not, I'm not going to go, I'm trying not to go beat for beat through the, the movie, I want you to watch it, because I'm, you know, so I'm kind of trying to change the way I do them, so, there's, let me see, there's Harold, uh, the big toe, the red spot, the red room, me tied O.T. Walker, and the scary, the haunted house. Um, there's five stories, only four from the book, I believe. But let's have remember the toe one, spider one, um, where the red the red spot. Um, yeah. So let's let's talk about how does Tommy know they're at the Bellows house. Unless he was waiting for them outside the drive-in, there's no way he could have known they were there. And, where'd the sister come from? Okay, like, Chuck's sister was with them in the car when they threw the dog poop. But when the bullies were chasing them to the, to the, uh, drive-in, she was gone. She wasn't with them. And then all of a sudden, she's back with them. It's a little confusing, but, Okay. And then she gets locked in there with him, but Chuck's the only one, that, or Chuck, Tommy's the only one that gets, Tommy's the only one that goes in there, I think, but he's the only one of the boys that gets affected by this. Special effects in this are pretty good, too, except for the, uh, most of the special effects. You get to the me, Dito, the walker, the creature. It's a little cartoonish, but other than that, good special effects. Um, the end sets up for a sequel, which thus far hasn't been greenlit yet. And I, I don't know how you could continue it because it's a pretty conclusive ending. I'm gonna tell you about the ending. It's supposed to be the review, you know. Um, so the main character and Ramon. Well, the only two left. The others, well, the Chuck's sister went end up in the hospital after her deal. So she survived, but the others gone. Um, and the main character, she gets stuck in the past, and they mistake her for Sarah Bellows. And uh, there's this whole plot with they believe that Sarah is responsible for the disappearance of several children. As they start going through the book, they realize that she made her own family disappear with her stories. And <clears throat> um, 
it's revealed that it was actually her family that poisoned the children. And they're blaming her for it. Because she had, she was an albino and she was forced to live in a room behind a shelf or something. Behind a wall. And they blamed her for it. And she hung herself, supposedly in the house, but then apparently it was in the hospital. I don't know. But, yeah. So, the main character, she vows to tell Sarah's real story to the rest of the world. Just tell them exactly what happened, tell the truth. And she writes it in the book. Let's it go. And then the main character, she says she's going, she knows her friends are still out there. She's going to find him. She's going to get him back. So, while that sets up for a sequel, I don't know where it can actually go. Because Sarah, you think Sarah wouldn't hold a grudge anymore. She wouldn't be able to do anything with the book. Although the main character does have the book. Ramon is seen going into the, uh, finally going, you know, to the draft, you know. But we've shown the main character, her father, and then Chuck's sister are in the same car. So, there's that. There's also this little subplot that I don't think they went all the way with. And that's the main character's mother left, just disappeared left when she was a kid. When the main character was a kid. When they introduced the book and what it was doing, I firmly believed it was going to be revealed. She was going to go through the book and find her mother's name in the book. Like, uh, Wish Upon, right? Wish Upon did that with the, the Wish thing. And it was made very obvious in that one. But this one, it would probably have been a decent twist. Even though I kind of was thinking about it, but it didn't do it. They didn't make it that the mother... Uh, disappear because of the book. In fact, they don't give an actual answer as to why she was gone. Why she left or she disappeared or what happened. They don't give an answer to that. Perhaps in a sequel? But like I said, it's going to be hard to do a sequel unless the book's powers are still working, but then Sarah... See, I don't understand how they could do it. Maybe that's why they got it. Maybe that's why I haven't heard anything yet. They got to write a... You know... Write a story. But yeah. Decent film. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. For me. Very good film. So what are your thoughts on scary stories to tell in the dark? Uh, did you read the books? Did you remember much of them? I barely remember. I only remember the three. So. And one of them when I was watching the movie. So. Yeah. So uh, what are your thoughts on that? Let me know in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. And of course. Love beef chicken grease. Must be the season of the witch. Sorry, that song stuck in my head.